last week's adventure from Canada. I tell you what, I've got three totally different um, views of it. All right. The ear went a bit yellow. I didn't I got on a mess with that bit. <laughs> Still, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> you are, well, that's what it's you. You live by, and learn by your mistakes, hopefully. It's still mm. hard getting the colour on the face. It just looks too much, doesn't it? Like it's, it's only a light pink. I yeah, don't know. No, well, it looks good. It's got the shadows there. Yeah. Not easy, is it? No. Well, that's good. Whose is that? That's mine. That's Ooh. yours. That's good. I couldn't get, I, I couldn't work out what the hairstyle should have been. I know. It was a bit wavy, I think, going back, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think someone was it. You said last it looked like she's got it tied up at the back. I think it was Chris. Chris said that. Yeah. No, I don't think. No. I couldn't work it out. No. Ah, no. that's good. Yeah. I think you've got yours a bit paler than mine, haven't you? Yeah. Look, does look it. Yeah. Yeah. They're so different. No. She, she looks like she's got a, a hat on, doesn't she? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could. Oh, I don't know what. To, hmm, I know my one. I I played with it a little bit and mucked it up. So oh. I washed all the background out at one stage, so that went right back to clear. Right, and then did some more on the face. I haven't washed it off. I've turned it over. I've, mm. I've sketched the giraffe on it. <laughs> <laughs> Today's on it. Yeah, but um, it's getting we, them so they look realistic, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's so hard. As you can. Yeah, yeah. I did trace mine. mine yeah, yeah, I did because I haven't got time to. I haven't got time to draw it all out. <laughs> so mm. I do cheat a bit, I must admit. But then you still got to paint it, haven't you? Well, that's right, yeah. Funny, I, I went the other way. I've re sketched it from, you know, just from using the photograph. Yeah, but you're good at sketching, aren't you? I, I, I never get time to do sketching. Mm. I, I never know. really consider myself good at it. I think <clears throat> it is what it is, but there are some rules that you can follow. We'll go through them in a minute. It's the same with the giraffe. Mm. I was going to do that. Um, hang on, that's this week. So I'll stop that share. I'll find this week's. When I have you watched like people painting a face on online, and they seem to go over the whole face first, don't they, with a colour, and then they just gradually put the dark bits in. So, why didn't so, you do that then? <laughs> didn't I do that? No, <laughs> I left some white bits there. Hmm. Oh, he's so we, have we have done it that way. But what, that's because they're using oils hmm. or acrylic. No, this was no, this was watercolors. It's just on yeah. little things on that printer set thing. Mm. I've I've seen I've watched Portrait of the Year a few times, but they're all so different, aren't they? All the oh yeah, well, that, yeah. Not many of them use watercolor, do they? No, no. no. There is no right and wrong there. Mm. Absolutely none at all. Everyone mm. does portraits totally different. And mm. tennis. Right. Today I was going to do it um, a different way, but then I, then I got a, a book in last night, so I thought I don't know what other people were going to be like, so I thought, well, mm. I'll have to go slightly traditional to make it you know work i've got the right time on that mm. just checking that i set the right time right yeah mm. 12 yeah it's right 
Mm. Because sometimes people, that lady last week was a bit late, later as well. All right. So I'll better pause. I'm just going to crack on. Yeah, well, that's it. Mm. Otherwise, you won't get finished, will you? <laughs> no, well, I'll keep an eye on the thing. Mm. Um, that one I want. That's got a spotlight for everyone. Mm. But, yeah. I've put the participants up as well. So if I if anyone New comes gets in. in, I'll see that I'll see it straight away. If they don't come, we might end up for an early lunch. <laughs> yeah, we say that every week. Yeah, we go, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we never believe it. <laughs> Oh. Right. Let's take oh, cheer. <laughs> yeah, last last week went over, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah, just a refraction. Portraits—they're always intense, aren't they? Mm. Um, what I was going to say was. Talking of that, oh. it's the same with that. Um, let me get a doodle. Oh, I'd use a fire row, I suppose. Really want to felt it. Is yeah. that the same giraffe, that lighter one? It's not, is it? No. 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 There's a reason why I sent that. It's got a wider face, hasn't it? You didn't read. No, it's the same. I've just zoomed it up. It's just a oh. zoom. Oh, it might be slightly obscure. Um, hmm. I thought I'd waffle through the image of the lady, but it's gone. I don't know where it's gone. But when I sketched it, For sketching, same it, it's the same for everything. Mm. If you just look at it, this one's slightly soft, but you can draw. If you even on your printer, if you print out, you could draw a line down the center. Yeah, doesn't work with. Um, I'm putting felt tips. I don't know. It's not something I carry. Hang on, two sex. Oh. A new ladies come. Hello. Sorry, I'm a bit late. Okay. Come on. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Yeah, and you. Whereabouts do you live? I live in Bristol in South oh, West right. England. Bristol? Where about you? Yeah. We're in uh, Paul. In That's God's country. We love oh. Bristol. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't hear where you said you were. I'm um, in Paul. Um, okay. But, uh, Saved in Christchurch. My parents are down in Poole, so oh, that's, right. uh, they're in Corf Mullen, just outside. Oh, Poole. right. Oh, yeah, nice. I know Corf Mullen. Mm. I used to live there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's where my parents are. Oh. Mm. In the world. Practically, you're practically <laughs> local. <laughs> um. All right. Well, I'm Somerset anyway, so. Okay. If you start. Whereabouts in oh. Somerset? Bridgewater. Uh -oh. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves Bridgewater. Mm -hmm. I've never well, been, but I've heard of it. No. Don't want to go there. No. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to... We were just... I was, we were just talking about... Um, or I was just about to talk about... Creating the portraits and that. Yeah. And ways of doing it. Everyone gets mm -hmm. bogged down with it. How to mm -hmm. approach it. I mean, even this giraffe mm -hmm. is a portrait effectively. Yeah. I was going to do it wacky, but then I then I got your a booking from Claire and I thought, no, be tame, take it to, <laughs> take it easy. So 
I didn't have a clue where to start, so I'm intrigued what you did. Yeah, but if you look at the, if you look at if you print one out, whether mm -hmm. it's a picture of a woman, man, or whatever it is, yeah. mm -hmm. if you find a line, I've only got this rubbish pen, but uh, uh, pastel pencil. But if you find a line, you can put a line down the middle, mm -hmm. where you know straight down the middle, it'll go through the nose, go through the between the eyes. You can draw a line. I tend to not draw a line on the eyes, but the eyebrows. Look for the eyebrows. Because oh, the eyebrows, wow. and this draft almost proves it. If you put a... Almost proves it. The ears aren't far away from it. I think that yeah, I've drawn mm -hmm. it slightly... You could draw yeah. it as a curve. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you know the eye, where the eyes come straight away. But, if, but other than that, you've got other key key lines there's a line yeah. same with people with the mm -hmm. with the mm -hmm. nose bridge of the nose look for the bones mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that the squares mm -hmm. and angles and then you can draw your sketch based on that mm -hmm. especially if you're um look it's all there just yeah. follow those you've got one two oh ah Easy, aren't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that we've read it, but I did it on this. I on this one, I printed a big one, and, and um, just to prove the point, because I sometimes I might want to do this again and again. So I'll do it on detail paper, or I'll do the sketch on this more often than not now, and then I'll try and then I'll just use a bit of de um, carbon paper and. Just go over it onto the um, the watercolour paper. But after I'd done it, so I'd looked at it and I thought, then you get you get to this stage, you think that ain't right. That doesn't feel right. Mm. So you can see I've done it on here. Exactly the same thing. I've looked at the, uh, at the um, portrait, at the photograph, and thought, hang on, there's a line, and I want, you need some markers to um sort of gauge where you're going to put some paint mm. you never get the nose right <laughs> but if you... hard, aren't they, noses? yeah but what i try to do or well, everyone tries to do is look for well we'll crack on and do it anyway but it's look for shapes don't paint the mm. get your paint in a face but you're painting a you're painting lots of little shapes that when they all come together they'll make the face you this one you were asking about <laughs> this yeah. weird picture well on here I, I thought black eyes look a bit dodgy i don't think i mean bear in mind we're doing watercolors mm. to get that mm -hmm. solidity so um what i did i put it in photoshop and stretched the image electronically so that i could just see if there was any detail in there i yeah. think that one the one on this side on the right hand side gives a little bit of a key, key. there's it's sort of an orange well it's burnt sienna with a dark line so he has got eyes there that was yeah. the only reason i i did it <laughs> just in case it take could take a bit of the hassle out of doing the eyes Mm. that's a good idea mm. well i because i use um i used to use photoshop but i'm i use a thing called affinity affinity software now affinity photo sorry mm. i'll go a bit zoom up a bit um i don't know what palette what paints you you, you use claire I've got a couple of different makes. I've got Cotman. Yeah, the good um, ones. We like them. Cotman ones, and I've got, and then I bought some um, own brand ones from the art shop that I go to most often as well. Brilliant. <laughs> cool, I've been doing any... lots of color mixing, getting to know the colors lately. That's the way. Work out good... what I've got. That's a good thing. I've, that that preempts what I was going to say in a in a strange. What paints do you use? Ah, nowadays, mm -hmm. over the years, I've collected 
thousands of different mm. you know, dozens mm-hmm. of different brands but mostly these days i use saint petersburg okay because they're not expensive they're made by dale Rowney. they don't come from russia they're made <laughs> in wearham i think yeah and they, they've got a good range of colors mm-hmm. and i like some of their pre-mixed colors mm-hmm. yeah you see them on here there's two in particular which is dew they call it dew but it's mm-hmm. sand okay and the other one is, I think it's Naples Flesh. Okay. Which is, I use a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not that I can't mix it. Yeah. I do mix it occasionally. I'll show you that in a minute. Mm. And the other colour is um, Cobalt Turquoise. Yeah. Which you use when you're painting portraits a lot. Mm-hmm. I've run out of here. Mm. So I'm going to... I'm going to wing it today because I'm determined the girls and everyone else that I've been going on about it for months. As <laughs> <laughs> so I'm determined to empty the all, yeah. the, pan, all the little square pans. Yeah, the pans, yeah. It's just the little box, you know, the little areas for each yeah. colour in, yeah. in the palette. Yeah. I've just been determined to get rid of it. Yeah. But, do you normally buy the pans or do you buy the tubes? No, tubes now. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've got. Even though there's a few that I've bought in pans and stuck yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, sure. In the wells, that's it. Yeah. Wells, aren't they paint wells? So mm-hmm. I've done that. But I, I don't use our alizarin crimson. I use rose madder. Mm-hmm. That color is peach. No okay. mocha. Okay. Mohammed Ali um, and some other people with darker skin people yeah. of colour as they say and <clears> I'm <throat> interested in how you mix the flesh colour yeah That's I'm going to do it I'm going to do it in a minute but I, okay. I was thinking of um, I don't know should I it's always a where do you start do you want to start with the background mm. Do you want to start with foreground? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I might just start with a background for a minute. Just put a little wash on. But I don't pre-plan these Tuesday mornings. Yeah. <laughs> well, I plan the subject more, unless someone mm-hmm. sends me something they want to paint. Mm-hmm. But the rest of it, I go in blind on purpose. Okay. Well... And you do mostly portraits. No, we we th- this no. uh, the last last week we did um, a portrait of a lady called Hillary. Okay. Um, this week is giraffe. This yeah. is the first ones we've done for a week for ages. Mm-hmm. But quite often we do seascapes. Yeah. Landscapes, castles. Mm-hmm. Okay. Really, Variety. Uh, cool. Well, yeah, because we got this thing. Or I, as the lead person, I just say we should. The idea behind it is, oops, didn't mean to put paint there. This is only clear water, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea behind it is that we do a, a range of subjects in order to when we go the in a way on a Tuesday we're forced into doing they might not be something that out of our they'll be out of our comfort zone mm-hmm. yeah so that, but the thing about it is they all have different um things that you need to focus on to get a, yeah. different techniques different mm-hmm. method methodologies you know ways mm-hmm. of painting them but the idea behind it is when you go away to paint something of your own that subject that you really love and like you'll have the skills because you've painted such an eclectic miss you you'll know exactly where to go <laughs> that got a, that got a round of applause didn't it <laughs> anyway i have no I yeah i don't always know where i'm going no. for me <laughs> but the problem is none of us got enough time 
to go away and paint some bits of aura. Wow. <laughs> never, never seem to find the time. I've, I'm not fussed about this background. I'm just, all this is, uh, is a bit of raw sienna. What was I trying to, oh, I know. And a bit of burnt sienna mixed, blended together. That's raw sienna in there. Burnt sienna over there. Mix it together and you get a sort of wonky foliagey colour. So I've made it all wet. So let's see what happens. Think jungle. <laughs> or what's that? What's that? Um, that place in Wiltshire. Uh, oh. Wildlife Park. Oh, where they have lions. Not Longley. Yeah, think Longley. <laughs> That's where it might, it's probably one of theirs. <laughs> but if you use um, a bit of raw sienna, you could add a bit of yellow. Why not? Cadmium yellow. Oh, blimey, that's strong. I've always said that about that. Green wise, I don't use green as such. I mix green, but there is a hooker's green or viridian that you can don't use it on its own, but add it to other colours and it's fine. It, that's what it's designed to be. Just trying to think. There's greens here, isn't there? I think the, the thing about it is, is, is to throw it. Oh, look at that. I knew I was going to do that. I've got a green giraffe. Well, it's next there, isn't it? <laughs> I did it when I put the water and I, oh dear. I'm just going around my pencil lines at the moment. What's the term? All I'm doing is saying it's white paper. I'm not afraid of you. So I'm going to go splish, splash, blush. And see what happens. Just set up some markers. I have put a line, pencil line, where that sort of branches is. Trunk, branch. But I just let the paint drizzle, see what happens. It's a bit dark here. I'll explain that in a minute. But blue and raw umber or burnt umber will give you a nice sort of hidden tree foliage type colour, I think. Mm. Put some of that in there. Variation of the theme. I thought it'd be nice to keep it nice and fresh, really. Need to put some of that on here, don't I? If it dries out. I'll use the um, sprayer atomizer. I'll probably come back to it anyway before we close. This brush, Claire, is a mop. It's from um, Rosemary yeah. and Co. Rosemary and Co. It's a number zero. Oh. They don't make this one now, but there's a brand they've called red dot okay that you can that that's equally as nice mm. i think i bought it a couple of years back um as a bin end where they'd made some for a school mm -hmm. during the pandemic yeah. mm -hmm. and obviously didn't need anything because they were closed or whatever so they were selling them off um relatively <gasps> see what i mean about that green yeah you just don't want to go there but it's but mixed with a blue or some other color yeah it can come out quite nice that's what it's designed to be mm. try and follow that up through i haven't painted any sky because i didn't think we needed any mm. i'm I put pressure on myself. I've I rented, hired a couple of tables at a Christmas exhibition mm -hmm. in November. Like they always have them in November. Yeah. Don't they? Mm -hmm. One at the beginning, one at the end. 
And I thought, oh, yeah. I'll take some pictures and flog them. Yeah, so now you've got to paint them. <laughs> well, I've got, based on the fact we do at least one a week, yeah. I've got plenty of pictures, but some of them, because mm -hmm. we only got such a short period of time mm -hmm. that they're never world class competition winners. They're more about the pr the process and having a bit of fun, really. Yeah. But some of them have turned out all right. Yeah. But I'm still raffing around here with this. <laughs> well, <coughs> hopefully it'll set the scene. It's like a camouflage sort of effect, isn't it? Well, it's blurred, isn't it? Out of focus. Yeah. So there's no... Well, this is the stage where you can have a bit of fun, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, there's no pressure to... You're not painting any distinct object. I mean, you can do loads of things. I'm conscious of not... Not ending up with a green giraffe. Well, <laughs> yeah, there is that. But no, the... You need to leave yourself space because you might need to push it in to the the giraffe when you finish. A bit of water might do it. I think you need to maybe put a few. The thing about brushes, everyone knows that I'm always saying this. You pay good money mm -hmm. for a brush, so don't. Don't just use mm. the tip. Use as much of it as you can. Yeah. Use it on its side, on its, you know, yeah. different methods. What you can't, what I normally, well, normally, what I have been that prone to do is, I think if it was a normal sort of, a non-Tuesday morning, no time scale, I'd sort of throw some salt on it now. Yeah, what does the salt do? It um, absorbs bits of paint and leaves a, a nice effect. Okay. I don't even know where my salt is at the moment. Oh. I've got a thing here oh, that turns. Oh, yeah. I have got it, but I can, I'll show you. Let's try and grab a few out. I've, I've put it in a one of those makeup rotating turners. Mm -hmm. I use it for, like, you, you know, sort of things. You can put all your bits of makeup and brushes, and but if you flick it on there like that and just leave it over a period of time, it will soak up bits of paint. Mm -hmm. And has to be rock salt, really, mm -hmm. where, where it's better. And you can see it, it'll abs anywhere where it's wet, it'll soak it up. So then when it dries out, I'll put a few more on because I'll, I'll give it a few minutes. It'll be fine. Just don't want it on the giraffe. There's a big damp patch there. Let's just spot it. It might work. But these are the quality salt, this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think Mel Melanie knows I've got this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's no good now. Can't eat it now, can we? No. <laughs> uh, right. I'll just briefly clean this muck up. I've only got four squares. In this, oh, I've got the lid off the salt. <laughs> Back in there. But it works great on foliage and things like that. Mm -hmm. Christmas, the, we always, the tradition is um, in December, we always do a Christmas robin. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I always tend to do on that is do the robin with all the foliage in the background, but use the mm -hmm. salt on the foliage then yeah. you get really interesting Christmassy type foliage you can have great fun with that as well especially if you mask out 
the robin or the bird or in this case a giraffe mm -hmm. with masking fluid mm -hmm. which i've got some here mm -hmm. um then you can sort of really go to town make it soaking wet mm -hmm. splish splash everywhere mm -hmm. all different colors flick them with the brush you know mm -hmm. you get loads of funny effects what were you saying just now oh i know flesh loads of different ways i think you've got um raw sienna you might not have rose madder but if you have all well and good just a, a smidge of that this brush is soaks up all the color as i mix it so but it's glued to my hand now but yeah i can just take that'll do it that gives you a nice flesh color let me tell you what if i use a different brush that doesn't soak up so much paint you want this it helps to see it i was here yesterday trying to decide this is a oil brush so that won't absorb paint but you can see you've got a nice flesh tone there straight away i'm so confident of it i'll actually stick a bit on the on the giraffe you can put them anywhere really but one way of getting rid of paper as well you can use any color sort of within the fleshy tone range but that, that's one of the colors the other color that i th think is handy is the sand color the saint petersburg call it june mm -hmm. how do you mix sand well the reason i buy it because it's flipping hard to mix well, sure. well, that's why they make it because it's really different it's mm -hmm. fiddly um i think i did it yesterday i think it, i'll try it just for a laugh raw sienna burnt sienna mix it together oh. there's dune there's sand in that one there so added a hint of blue do you think oh careful we're almost there so there to there yeah mm -hmm. i did it yesterday mm -hmm. and i the, the color that was there and because i was thinking mm -hmm. oh, what color how do you mix it and it's that mm -hmm. gives it that mm -hmm. But the beauty of mixing your own is you can you can take strength or add mm -hmm. so you start yeah. the base of it and you yeah. can add you want your sandy color to be a bit grayer add a bit more blue if you mm. want to be darker you could even add a little bit of green and you can move away from it don't add too many colors otherwise it'll go muddy but you can get my drift yeah i'm not gonna waste that paint got a bit of green in it so but our little friend here look if you look at his features look for shapes so those nostrils or the darks in his nose are distinct shapes they're sort of a triangular shape if you like so whack them in the eyes i've spoiled it now because i i i um did that photoshop on that pictures <laughs> now i know there's orange in uh burnt sienna so that's really sort of spoil it a, a little bit raw sienna that was blue wasn't it burnt sienna a little bit of raw sienna i'm just mixing up a dark now no but it's heading towards the, the um sandy color that i started off with just look for some of those shapes I'm using an oil brush now. Why do I do it? 
Uh, seemed like a nice idea at the time. <laughs> Well, it's a good idea. You got a choice. You can do it several different ways. You can look for, do it this way. Look for shadows. I could if, if I want. But if you can, try and paint with your arm. What do I mean by that? If you hold the brush down the bottom or around that, you, the tendency is to paint with your hand. If you stand up, hold the brush further down, you'll paint with your arm. You'll find it after a while. It might seem a bit, a bit awkward to start with, but after a while, it will feel more comfortable. And you'll get a, you'll be amazed. You'll think you're you'll think you're Picasso or some other <laughs> famous artist after a while. Especially if you've got if you've got a brush with a little bit of point on it, you can get it's surprising how much control you can get. I'm just trying to think where there's some dark splodges. Splodges even. Before I I'm going to do what um, Carol was saying earlier in a minute. I'm going to dry, let this dry and then we'll paint some thing all one colour. What I did notice with this um, beautiful animal is um, eyelashes. <laughs> This now that well, then that's long eyelashes, they? Yeah. yeah. Then I started thinking, hmm, is it a male or is it a female? I don't know. Obviously, being a <coughs> sexist bloke or whatever mm. you want, but naturally you think of false eyelashes as a female thing or a long eyelashes. Saying that, my little grandson's got them. <laughs> He's got beautiful long eyelashes. Mm. I'm just, I haven't put any more paint on the brush for quite a while now. Just try and find some tufty, tufty bits. If you rub it off, you'll get a different tone of it. There's so many different ways of doing it. Some people like doing the darks first in watercolour. Or the shadows. Which is what I'm trying to do here, I suppose. And then build up. Afterwards. But look for shapes. That's what I keep reading and hearing. And trying to practice and it's a long hard road once you get it I think your your confidence and the way you paint will change considerably and a lot of a lot of people don't um especially oil painters, they don't um, use, well, they can't use pencil marks because the oil's opaque, isn't it? So it just mm -hmm. rub them out straight away. But in watercolour, we've got a slight advantage there that we can put some pencil lines in just to set a little road, little road map. I'm really conscious of so that you can just pop them in a few darks. I'm not going to paint his eye black yet because I want to put some undercolour in there. This bit's shadowy, isn't it? Use a bit of burnt umber, uh, raw umber is good. What's raw umber? 
it's a sort of a light brown isn't it it's a good color to base as a base and that's um oil color uh oil painters portraits that's what they use a lot that's just a white keep colors simple just a straight out of the thing out of the palette nothing i'm adding nothing to it but i'm going to stick it over the top of the shadowy colour I did a minute ago. See what happens. And I'm going to let it oh, mix up a load of flesh then. But it's not far off. It's more of a this is a variation of the theme, isn't it? It's more of a, a lighter paler fresh colour. So I'm using raw umber and rose madder this time. Might try the other brush actually, because it's softer. It hold more water. See what happens. And I'm just gonna go everywhere. It's not quite mm. any problem you've got well my instant thought then flitting through my mind was that because I'm using a similar palette to the background, the variation's not as good as I would have liked. So, but this is going back to what you were saying earlier, Carol, was mm. using one color yeah. to do the whole thing and then build up from there. So I've just See, I do listen. People say these things. <laughs> I don't see yeah. Raw umber and a hint, a smidge of red gives me that beigey colour. Oh, don't really want it over that side, do I? <laughs> Trying to leave some bits of white, I think. Well, I can always um, go back and introduce a few bits of white anyway. My picture doesn't really show the almost tempted in it to put a little red bit there to, to form a lip because <laughs> he's such a handsome or she he almost wants it to be have some lips, doesn't it? Well, you can try, <laughs> might work, but these are variations. Of the theme. Just look at it. Look for some of those shapes. And then build it up. Oh, it's a shame about the background. What I might do is turn it upside down and introduce some blue. Pull it down there. In other words, put some sky on him. Mm. Happy Basil? Yes, dear. <laughs> Helps me through the day. John Cleese. Hmm. The, the thing, well, I'll show you. Look, the difference between the, 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 the flesh tone that you comes mix, already mixed up at the tube. I've only got a little bit left in the thing now. But I'm, and the same with the dune, the sand colour. I'm going to get it to mix out of there. It's been hot, hasn't it, the last few days, so, or humid, it seems to dry them out. But it, I think it, the thing about the paint that's mixed, ready mixed, has a, I think it's got a different binder to it. But I've got a funny feeling it's because it's got a, it's it's a, it's more opaque. It's a nice colour, but it's as soon as you put it on, you think, hmm. But I'm not really fussed about what colour. But it's it's got a more an opaque feel to it. The same with the June colour. 
อ๋อว้าวยังเหลือกินเลิกเลย What about the olives then? We say some burnt sienna, didn't I? Well, I'll try a bit. But you can see the. Well, you probably can't on there, but what if this is brush has been in the the flesh mix, ready mixed flesh? The raw sienna has got a a beige feel to it now. It doesn't feel quite the same. Strange. I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow to it. Just take it, take the edge off of it, mixing it like a. Have a look at the. Well, I lost it. Well, I did have a picture, didn't I, with the orangey bits in? Well, I'm gonna dab them in, even though it's early in the stage. I think I'll drop it in for a minute. It'll look weird because. We ain't got no shade and shadow on it. <laughs> But I'm not going to waste that color because if I add some burnt umber to it, it will give me get me back into the. But Claire's been mixing colors, so she's getting the hang of it. Mm. Come on, I've got. A... Oh, I'm going to sit down, get a bit closer, so I can. I'm going to muck it up. I'll muck it up proper. I'm getting real close. Mm -hmm. Oops, parent in the wrong way. This is surreal. This is. I've got salt all over the place. <laughs> all over the outside of the paper. That was a nice color I had there, which was the um, the June color that I tried to make burnt sienna, raw sienna, and then adding a hint of blue, because the blue, blue and raw sienna, sorry, blue and burnt sienna goes gives you grey. That's why it's So um, close. well, it's such a nice color to use because you get so many variations of um, gray tone. Which I'm going to now going to drop straight into that burnt sienna that I put in the eyes. Build up some more. Oh, that's green. I don't even know my own palette. Let's see, raw sienna. Seems I'm struggling to mix up enough paint to keep going here. And a hint of blue. Just takes the edge off of the. Good to see other people having the same problems I have with the paint mixing. Yeah. I don't feel like I do it the same every time. That's why. Yeah. It's. What do you mean by that? When you say Some, that, sometimes I feel like I mix two colors together and I get one color, and other times I get something completely different. And I'm sure it's probably stupid with the amount of water that's there as well. There's so many different factors, isn't there, when you're mixing colors together? I no. guess there is a. I think that's why I deliberately. I think that what's the key to that? I did. I would have said the key is not to mix, not to use too many colors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hence the reason I've only got a few here to, yeah. to, to play with. The other yeah. thing is, um, well, it's gone there. I lost the thread. <laughs> I want to come back. The other, hmm. it will come out. If not, I'll go and have a lie down. <laughs> It does teach you to. 
the less on the, the if the less colours you use, it, it does teach you to well it forces you to, to mix blue oh. colours. I'm using a flat brush here now. Not for any particular reason. It was just next to the one I was going to pick up and I picked it up by mistake. <laughs> no, what I'm saying, it gives you more, you'll get, mixing them up like that, you'll get confident at it. Yeah. And <coughs> you'll get to know. There isn't, I like it, it's interesting in this picture. His eyes are looking good now. Mm. Well, I'm, I'm already, I've only just put a little bit of yeah, blusher on. Yeah. But if you, this isn't, I don't think I'm going to get away with painting a a master. I don't want a, a full blown, I nearly said a Rolf Harris portrait. Mm, sorry. Mm -hmm. But disgrace, shame. No, uh, a royal commissioned portrait. But um, today, this sort of a giraffe is fun, isn't it? You can't paint a giraffe yeah. serious. No. But I've drawn. I'm just still doing what I started out with, put in, I've mixed up some more of that sh um, shadow, sandy sort of mixture that I started with. And I'm just looking at the image thinking, looking for the shapes, the shape there, and it goes up there, up around that nostril. It's a shade, a shadow. So if you got to be careful here because I need to add some more of the skin tone in amongst that. But it's definitely got a shady bit down, coming down here. Pick him out. Just the other thing to be aware of is brush strokes. So if you want to, if you want them to be curvy, for goodness sake, make your brush stroke curvy. Follow the, follow the, <laughs> follow the line of it. If it comes down, if it comes down at that angle, then surely you've got to make your brush go that angle. Mm. Helps a lot. Picking out. I like this colour. Quite like the brush as well. It's humid. So the other thing that I'm always whinging on about, Claire, is mm -hmm. softening down. If you'll find it makes such such a change to the way you paint and the results by that i'm saying if you put let's try it if i put a, a line of paint across there whack my brush in water and then leave the main color but the other bits soften down yeah you just soften to, the edges hmm, you need to and then it'll blend and you'll get those look that's what watercolor is all about you'll get those lovely mm. i'll do it there there's a bit under here. And I've got some paint. I deliberately been doing it today. Mm. Um, talking of mixing colours. But I keep running out of the colour that I'm using a lot of. So it's forcing me to use. What did I say? Raw sienna. Burnt sienna. And a hint of blue. Oh, <laughs> even green. <laughs> that was a mistake. But if, if you, you can't not mix that up again and again. Mm -hmm. 
because it's fundamental to the the whole picture. Well, mm. it's gonna you're just gonna need it over and over. So you might as well keep it really simple. Um, I think what I might do. And I've underpainted the eye a bit. I'll probably drop a big blob of that on there. The paper is bouncing. It's more like canvas than paper. <laughs> as I put paint on. But if you... There you go. There's a sign. I put a blob of paint on there. Whack my brush in clean water, which ain't. Now I'm just going to go underneath and soften it down. That's clean water on there. Mm. my foot I dabbed it off on a bit of tissue I've got a piece of tissue down here as well so mm. I'm just using that to sneak it off and then you get those blends that you're looking for that makes it water watercolour ding 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 oh, I don't know oh, I don't know help I need somebody <laughs> Every Tuesday, we come along mm. and we think, oh, that shouldn't be too difficult a subject, that should it? Should be able to get a nice little representation. And every Tuesday, I think, this is hard. <laughs> Halfway through, I think, oh, blimey, mm. this isn't going so well. Mm. Then come back tomorrow and you look think, oh, I don't know, it looks all right. It dries back, doesn't it, a lot. Yeah. Just messing about with that same shadow colour but adding different bits to it. Yeah, don't want to go in there. There's that lid, there's like an eyelid there. Mm -hmm. One of my favourite, but I think it's a bit early for it, but one of my favourite colours is burnt amber and blue. Mm -hmm. That's my dark. The, the colour that I'll go to finish off painting towards the end. Because it's watercolour and that's what we do. We add darks at the end. And that's where we get our little bits of definition these brushes are amazing how it does it it's got such a fine point on it you can just sort of drizzle paint on but it is fun mm. when your papers i don't know i don't know if fun's quite the word but it's interesting when your paper is mm -hmm. so really nice and damp. Mm. Just tease bits of paint on top of paint and drizzle it, and it sort of goes along. Now there's a nice. I'm going to get that all right. It's all right. No, I haven't picked up a rigger yet. <laughs> I've used more brushes this morning, more by mistake, than I have in the last month. This this is an old brush I've just picked up. I think I stole it. <laughs> yeah. Or did I? I think. I don't, know, it's, it's, I don't know if theft's the wrong word. I think it's more along the lines of it came to me. It just sort of... You borrowed it and forgot to give it back. <laughs> could have been that one. I was more inclined to think that I was, at, I was running an art class somewhere and it, it just sort of got left behind in my mm -hmm. bag. Mm -hmm. And nobody ever claimed it back, so 
And at the time, I wasn't using the brush anyway. And it was only like years later, I think, oh, that's a nice brush. Mm -hmm. What's that do? <laughs> then I remember saying, pure sable, oh, that ain't one of mine. <laughs> There's no way I, could, I would have bought that. Not on my pension, or lack of it. Actually, I think I've just got, a, I'm about to get a pay rise. Pensions oh. going out. It's in Daily Mail, must be true. <laughs> Not that I read the Daily Mail. It's just... The BBC wouldn't lie to me, would they? Would they? What are we going to get then? <laughs> For all of us, all pensions. <laughs> Burnt. I haven't got burnt umber. I've got raw um, um raw umber today. So I'm using that as a dark with blue. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm just adding a few. What sort of blue are you adding to it? Ah, no. There's a God. You are asking really <laughs> odd questions. You. I've just I've just been doing lots of color mixing and color wheels and that sort of thing, and just realizing the full extent of what I can do with what I've got. <laughs> now, now what I've done, what I do now, the I how do I say it? I don't. I think I've got a bit long in the tooth. Me, I don't look at colors in the same way. In the way I look at, I'm mixing color up. Mm -hmm. and I'm thinking it's burnt amber. I know if I add blue to it, it will go head towards black. I won't give me yeah. black, but it, mm -hmm. but it will give me a nice. And if I add green to it, it will go even. Yeah. So I tend not to do that. But the in answer to your question, that that box there with the blue, yeah. one mm -hmm. half has got ultramarine in. Mm -hmm. And the other half has um, a squirt of cobalt blue. Okay. okay. So the I, ultramarine on its own, I've never liked. Mm -hmm. That's what they they do in t um, watercolor textbooks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, oh, to mix a sky color, you yeah. use ultramarine. Yeah. And an ultramarine sky, I don't know. To me, it looks absolutely horrendous. Mm -hmm. So I, it looks like an old. It's ultramarine sky. It looks like an ultramarine sky. But I don't want an ultramarine mm -hmm. sky. I want yeah. a sky with. Well, if you come again, send me a, a reference picture of a sky, a mm -hmm. that, that you want to do, and we'll we'll do that. Okay. No problem. Um, but skies have so much to do on them mm. I don't know where this draft spots are I'm sticking I'm using this mix of this what I, I'm calling it sand but it isn't really now is it and the mix of the dark colour that I just use and clean water and softening it down in the hope that it will blend quite nicely when it dries back Trouble is, the little rascal's got got them all over the place. Mm -hmm. So you think you sussed it by doing one line of it, and you, you, all of a sudden you look and think, "Oh, blimey, is I never like." But that ridge there is part of his skull, isn't it? So he's got yeah. a line of them coming down there. Goes to, oh, that goes a bit further. No, I don't. So you got a choice. You can do it like I've done it there. Just put a line. Let's go up. Be brave. A line of colour. Then flick your brush in some water. And this being a soft sable, just soften down. Don't touch the middle bit, just round the edges with clean water and it should blend down. You want it in to form a valley uh, or a valley, yeah. It's a good term. Down this side, don't I? So I want the water to run the paint down that way a little bit. This bit's annoying over this side. <laughs> I just noticed. It looks like, oh, maybe it's not in giraffe land. It might be Andy. 
It's like it's got a frown on him. <laughs> but the thing is, I've I've sat down, um, <laughs> and you'll notice it. I don't sit down and paint very often. Well, not early on in the picture, anyway. When you sit down and then you stand up, you think, oh, blimey, it's a different <laughs> picture. Why didn't I do that? Why didn't I paint that bit? What, 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 what was it? You know, you suddenly find loads more to paint or not or to take out. We haven't mm. approached that subject yet. <laughs> um, this needs to extend itself because it's his ear goes there. I haven't mentioned the salt yet, which. I've left mm. festering away. I don't think it'll work because it's um, not enough there. This is fun. I think you, when you get to have a, when you crack, in, crack on and have a go, you, you'll enjoy this. Mm. Good one for the gallery. Now, ah, what it's going to do, mix up some, some more of that fleshy tone which I said was, I think I was using burnt umber and rose madder. Wrong with the rose madder. It is so, look at that, it's so strong. <laughs> it's yeah. seriously strong paint. But I wanted it to go a bit of buff. So if I had a little bit of raw sienna to it, it should go hen makes it veer towards the yellow side doesn't it so i just wanted to add a bit maybe not enough there really a bit more yellow buff in it sort of a i nearly said peach there but i wouldn't do it because i've got a ready mixed color called peach in my palette that would be cheating wouldn't it well i don't think i Have fun with it. You want to do a, a pure facsimile of the draft, then you're going to spend weeks mm. painting every, you know, I'll try a little bit of the flesh tone just to prove, see what it looks like. And mixed up flesh. But of, of all the colours that I that I'd recommend, I, I think that'd be it. Because you can do it. You can, it's not just when you're painting it like now. It's later on when it's bone dry, and you look at your painting. I'll use the other stuff that I mixed up. It's quite it's good enough. Um, I'm always telling everyone that you can use it to brighten, lighten, darken. You know, you can add more sparkle to the color, to the painting by adding flesh. I've even got where on my desk. Well, yeah, there it is. In my little, I've got a little tray over here full of lying flat pencils brushes i've got a watercolor pencil that's spelt in french or is it german dutch i don't sure it's not actually called flesh it's called something else. Oh, beige red which tomorrow or yeah be tomorrow when it's bone dry i'll probably go over it and sort of look look for little bits that need sparkle so don't think just because you finished, you're finished. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. This brush is great, but it's useless at mixing up larger volumes of paint. Hence the reason these, but I don't advertise or sell brushes or recommend, mm. but these are good. They're, um, 
Rose, most of rosemary brushes are brilliant anyway, aren't they? Every, they're all sort of hand handcrafted. Mm. Um, see, that didn't work. That was the neat flesh. My flesh was better. The one I mixed up. We'll see you then. Well, it was, it was I was a beigey colour. I was trying to trying to get and uh, just wanted to drop a bit over those shadows that I made earlier. I didn't. I'm using the stiff brush to mix the paint and the, the thin one to put it put it on but you can you can do this easy just mix up some flesh so, so if you've got nothing else out today you know how to mix flesh paint mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'll send you the video anyway but well I'll whack it on YouTube later, so later today and send you a link. So from that that aspect, you can just pause it and you'll Yeah. The notes are there. Then you'll be a master master painter. Mm. Master paint mixer. <laughs> <laughs> but beauty of it is Claire, your the colours that you use. Mm. A, a slightly different blend to mine mm. so your flesh tonal should be slightly different especially yeah. if you've the um most most um this brush is really weird but most of the um paints that come in sets and that use alizarin and crimson to um As the the not so red red, you know the crimson mm. dark red. Mm -hmm. But the thing about lizard and crimson, it's fugitive. Well, they all are. The rose madder is as well. But the the um, the crimson isn't light fast. Mm. Yeah, lizard and crimson. If you leave it on a shelf for a week, it'll fade away. Mm. Here's a good example. What I was on about earlier. I just mixed up some of that dark tone put flesh on his neck her neck its neck and um just dropped it in onto the flesh tone and now i'm just clean water try and get it to blend he's a he's a scorcher isn't he? now we do it the other way you can put clean water on an area gently and then drop some of the dark on it that'll give you a beautiful um what's the word it's not random is it it's non-contrived i suppose what i'm thinking it's the thing you know it could go up couldn't it right? Just push it up a bit. I've got pencil lines on here, which are really just really distracting. I can see why people don't use pencils. They're distracting me from the final little thing. But you can see what I've said right from the start. If you just look for shapes, like this is like a straight line going across there. It's dark at the top, so draw a straight line of dark paint, put clean water on the brush, and then soften it down from one side, and it will blend down. I could do a bit more actually, down in that corner, because there's a, a bit that goes down to his mane. I still. Oh, what? <laughs> well, those are the techniques. Once you've got them, they'll live. Once you suss that out, 
It will live with you forever. And the beauty of it is, as a as an artist, the loveliness of it is, it's never the same every time. Every mm. time you do it, you'll get a different, um, mm. a, a slightly variation, you know, a variation of the result, mm. which is makes it once you become, yeah, you know, really confident as an artist. There is is such a time. Then you look for the things that other people think are, go wrong or are not confident to do, but those are the things that, that you find more rewarding. And one of the ways to do it is that put a line of colour and then clear water underneath it. I suppose the skillful bit as time goes by is knowing where to put the water and where to put the mm -hmm. colour. But that comes with trial and error, combination of a little bit, but equally it's it's to do with what I'm saying. Um I'll do it here, it's a good spot. I'm gonna put a a line of paint there, maybe a bit more. It's a blob almost. I can't control it with this brush because it's, it's stable hair, isn't it? Clean it off of water. You can always take the access water off and just put a little line of paint on it and go away from that area. Just let it do its stuff. I'll do it again, because I, I, I like doing it. <laughs> I'll do it up here. You can just put a line of paint, take the edge off, and then put clean the clean water underneath, and you get that such a lovely shade. And looking at Put this sunlight coming from putting a shadow on it, mm -hmm. and he's got it here as well. So I'm going to do it there. It's just burnt amber and no raw amber and blue. It's like a, I think there's a line of it. I think I've put a hint of it there. Bit of paint, clean water. And we'll just let it. Oh, I love that. <laughs> so annoying. We used to have a an artist called George with us, Claire. Mm -hmm. Animals um, all the time. Mm -hmm. With a with watercolor. Mm. You see so many people selling paintings of animals, don't you? It's yeah. Very popular, very popular at like the craft markets and things. Yeah, you do. It has its um. Well, down here we've got um. What's his name? Jake Winkle lives down the road. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He does the uh, quirky ones. Mm. And that was ooh, 10, 12... Mm, Nearly ten years ago, he started doing that, and mm. there's I can think of several ladies and people that used to come to the exhibition painting those. All of a sudden, it became really the thing to paint quirky pink, red, yellow, and goodness knows what color. Giraffes, donkeys, all kinds of mm. things. But I was going to do something like that today, and I, uh, but I looked at this one and I thought, do you know, what? it's such a nice, a nice creature. It'd be nice to paint him solid, a little bit more robust. Or maybe I'm thinking I'll paint it my way. 
in my mm. style mm. or as i feel mind you this palette i'm i'm stuck and i because mm -hmm. i haven't even got a i haven't even got a red in it not a recognizable red what i'm going to go for now is a fan brush hopefully it won't fall off why i just want to add some i've got the dark paint so i'm just going to add a few dark Lodges, furry bits, not overpowered. My paper is still soaking wet. Beauty of these things, you can just use the six hairs on one end mm. <laughs> and flick it, especially up here. I noticed this really frustrated me. This piece of paper because where I've stretched it, it's <laughs> it's paint's going up and down like a drum. <laughs> might not show up on there I don't think but you should be able to get a few it's a bit like painting bricks mm. you can't paint all the blooming bricks so there's no way you're going to you're going to put all the hairs on a <laughs> giraffe <laughs> So just look for a few selected points. Big damp patch there. I don't know what's happening. I think I'll stick away from that. They're great, these brushes. Don't very often use them flat. Like I always use either the end or an edge. Never know what's going to turn up. No, don't like that. We'll leave it for now. We haven't had a rigger on board for a while at all yet. Mm. Give us a rigger. Come on. Give us a rigger. Burnt umber. Raw umber in this case. Bit of blue. So, ooh. that was dark. Why not? Don't want it too blue. But it will give you a nice. Well, I never mix it up like Dulux. Even the dark, I, I, I feel the paints sort of meet each other, but they don't coagulate into one distinct tone. Now it's a question of looking for some real darks, dark areas, and dabbing them in, especially on their eyes. But the reason I put the... I wanted to put that golden colour underneath because I wanted just a hint of something to show through. It's not going to be easy, though, because it's going to look... you know, Because I noticed in the... When I, in the, the um, reference image, makes him look quite not nasty in a way. There's a distinct edge to it. Again, I don't use the brush, totally use the point, put it on its side and flick it as well. And you'll get these nice random. lines but you can still do the same thing so if you I'm digging it, how many different strokes have i got here i'm wiggling it left and right and down left and right now because i want to put just looked up and spotted what it looks like a triangle shape invariably they are triangle shapes when i'm on about these Dark, these different colour shapes that you should look for. Invariably, they're, they're like little triangle wedges. Mm, I just went back and looked at the um, at the reference picture because it looks almost like there's two noses there. And it's the shadow, isn't it? Yeah. 
exactly. It looks the same on the reference picture. It looks almost like it could be two noses, one on top of the other. Yeah. Almost. I think I've got a bit blue in that. I like dark, but I don't like it blue. It's interesting how you look at things completely differently when you're thinking about painting them. Yeah. You see different things, don't you? Yeah, well, missed it. At, uh, you'll see it on the video. Mm -hmm. um, at the beginning, we went through just quickly, like the images that we'd all done. Well, there's a, usually there's half a dozen more of us on a Tuesday, but mm -hmm. holiday season. Yeah, sure. Um, everyone's gone off on holidays, jollies to mm -hmm. heaven. Sussex, they're all over the place. Mm. These are, you know, sometimes come back with some good subjects for, you know, constant mm -hmm. for future work. It's got a beard as well, hasn't he? Mm. How am I going to put that in? Goodness me. Just use the rigger and flick it up, perhaps. Or down. We need something there. It's the beauty of watercolour. If it, if it, if you do too much, you can wash it off. Unless it's unless it's our alizarin crimson or mm -hmm. rose madder, because they're so fugitive, you can't. They don't wash out. Well, mm -hmm. you'll get a lot of. You'll weaken it, but still, it's very high staining paint. Mm -hmm. I've done it again here. I've just put a little bit of paint on clean water and I'm just lifting it back up now, pushing it back towards the chin. I don't particularly want it to go at the bottom. It's basically it would have a shadow of description down here as well. Clean water, drop in a bit of that shadow tone and just let it blend down. Ooh, that was a big sigh. Unusual. All right. I'll mix up a bit more with the um, flesh tone, just to prove to Claire that we can keep mixing it <laughs> as often as yeah. you like. But I've used burnt umber this I time. I think part of my issue with mixing is not knowing if I'm putting how much of the different paint I'm putting in. And putting too much and then um yeah you don't always know if you've got like equal amounts of each or whatever but you just have to try and error isn't it really? yeah i mean the one to watch for and is the crimson red because yeah. you can use cadmium red or whatever red you got yeah um you don't need a lot of it yeah absolutely you watch i just i just almost just touching it Touching the the colour, I'm not actually putting much in it at all. Mm -hmm. Not easy getting a beige colour though. It's got a distinct beiginess about it. So I've sort of given up on that. <laughs> Let's put my put my hand on my heart and saying I I'd probably sit down and work it out if I wanted to. Mm. But I'm not really that fast as long as it as long as he turns out not too bad i'm all right that's a bit strong but don't forget if it is too strong just add more water yeah. or water as they say down in bournemouth <laughs> somerset is water in it <laughs> there's no tea in water <laughs> and this is in a cup Oh dear. Used to go to Bristol quite often. Just, uh, mm -hmm. Used to play, in, uh, my band used to play out there. We used to rehearse it. Mm -hmm. okay. Bristol Rovers, um, mm -hmm. Robin's um, yeah. Club, we used to rehearse mm -hmm. it. I played there at one stage. Good yeah. days. Now I'm in care homes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love, yeah, I'm doing that tomorrow. 
Hawk Day Center. Magic. So rewarding. Mm. There's a lot of people don't even know what day it is. But as soon as you start singing the song, they suddenly know where they are and everything. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. I don't... It's one of the few things I do for nothing. Mm. Tomorrow's hit single is... Um, <laughs> what a difference a day makes. I've been playing with that. Mm -hmm. what, yeah, it's horrible, isn't it? You get a tune in your head, you can't, it doesn't go away. Every time you learn a new tune. <laughs> it's not looking too bad, is he? Yeah, got some character, hasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I was, that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to. Everyone else, when they email me their image, mm -hmm. they're all, that's the beauty of doing these things. Sava. I'm going to shake off some salt. I don't think it's, it's not been on there long enough or whatever. Where am I going to put it? On the desk. Hmm. Can't get it off. <laughs> it's stuck. Hmm. Oh. Hmm. I was Maybe want to flick it all over the floor. That's the thing. Get the gist. Get, you'll get all these sort of almost like leaf, leafy bits. I've got a dry brush. That's why I use the hair dryer. Just dry it off. I'll tell you what, that's not a bro not a bad little half hour's work that. But the techniques are more important. Yeah. Spending a little bit more time doing it. A little bit it's like building up the colour gives it a lot of depth, doesn't it? Building the colour up in the way that you have. Dry enough, isn't it? Alright. It. You see where that salt was, it leaves uh, sort of funny edges, it leaves a sort of a Crystal like crystal effect, like like it is on foliage, works really well. I'm going to turn him upside down for a sec. Um, find a bit of blue. That's all. Oh, yes. There's a tube. You know, I don't know. I always stick to what I say. There's Horizon Blue, which is number W one o four from Holbein. If mm -hmm. you can afford whole bean paints, you know you've made it. I can't remember how much that was, but it wasn't cheap. I think it was something stupid, like the little tube was mm. 11 quid. Yeah. Must have been a good week that week, is all I can say. Mm. Yeah. But it's a bit like Cerulean Blue. It does a good mm. job for that sort of stuff. What I'm going to do is use the big mop brush. And go around. Oh, I it's a bit of blue, it? Don't know why I'm wrong to it. Probably screw the old picture up now. <laughs> but I didn't put it in. Oh, it's a bit yucky. Green water is a rarity here this morning. I just want to drop in some. Oh, bits. Normally you do this first. <laughs> or maybe. Well, I'm only, I've made it wet, so I'm going to drop it in. But it, it should go diffuse anyway. It's a nice colour, this Horizon Blue. Mm. It wasn't a waste of money. I've 
I've used it quite often in seascapes just to do that, what it says on the tin, the horizon. I've just gone up to the edge of the wee beastie. No, it's a bit much there. Make it a bit stronger at the top, perhaps. But I've deliberately turned it upside down so that it'll run away from the drum. Should have. Should make a bit of an effect. Go on, put some there. I dare you. Good boy. It sort of might deflate him a bit. Turn it over. And uh, the only other the only other thing I might do or I'll I'll do it now anyway, is I've got a tube of white gouache. Mm -hmm. And why I'm drawn to using it on this particular subject. But you can use another day we'll do it we'll do it um we use it on a portrait but you can soften down areas that you want to just by adding a few bits of that on it. Especially because I'm wet. But don't get too um, worried about it because it does dry, dry transparent or translucent, whatever the color, color is. But it can help you fill in a few areas of concern. Like, like highlighting, isn't it? It's one way of putting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it will, but but as I say, it's not strong enough. Mm -hmm. but what it will do, sometimes I'll include it in with the flesh tone, mm -hmm. because later on when it's when everything dries, mm -hmm. two or three days time, Pauline and Carol have heard me say this thousand times when it when it dries a couple of days mm. you've got it, you can use a flat brush and just make it damp and you you can i don't know what the word is sculpt you can sculpt the picture into smoothing everything down you can take or not you can move it around just slightly okay. with a damp brush and it's really it, it's it can change the picture completely mm -hmm. from something that's so so into something that's really f smooth and soft. Mm. I think I've done all right here today. I was thinking it might be a bit too much for me. Not I'm not patronising. I was sometimes you look at a thing and you think, hmm, this ain't going to be as straightforward as it looks. <laughs> I'm not really putting much paint on, actually. It's just, it feels, you blend it in. What a beautiful animal. Mm. It's the thing about painting a subject, isn't it? You, you look at it in a whole different light after you've mm. all of a sudden a tree's not a tree mm -hmm. don't even start with skies I haven't even got any paint on this now let's just tidy that up what plus if it goes there push that up Everybody's 
raring to go out and have a go now, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> sense the anticipation. Yes. It's not a complicated subject. As long as you get a nice um a nice drawing, you know. But mm. sketching it's not rocket science either. It was if you stick with that model I said, you know, look at find some find the center lines and the I I I reckon if you Look, do the I I don't know. I've, I've, I personally I like to find the eyebrow line, <laughs> and then put the eyes yeah. underneath that. So if you draw mm. a straight line across where the eyebrows are, um, and then you know the eyes are underneath it. But one thing I would say, not so much with this because it's a, it's been a sort of labour of fun and love really, but. If it's a, a figure, what you can do, and what, what I see a lot of um, well-known portrait painters do, is they'll pick, start on an area, whether it's an eye, or usually an eye, paint, if you do your rough sketch and then do the eye really nice, and then take me, take visual measurements from that one. That eye's there, right? So I've got that one there, right? And now and build it all up from there, and you'll find your sketching will go a long way. That's how they do it. Yeah. And, but it's such a um. Confidence is the the main thing, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I'm confident that I can get this picture in this amount of time, and I, mean, I don't feel like it. But there is a little bit of pressure to do something because I'm not. Um, it's not a pre-worked sort of example, and I am doing it live mm. I'm not going to tweak the video I'm not going to redo it mm. so what it is what it is so there is a little bit of pressure on and it don't always come out all that good mm, quite like that mm. but when it's dry you'll be able to blend it you know lift colors in take them out like that if you think that's a bit too dark or not dark enough and just loosen loosen it up look it off and put back on there <laughs> lovely oh, what? you can see how quick it is to build up a subject there Only till tomorrow you suddenly look at it and think, oh, I've missed that bit off. Well, that shouldn't be there. That's over there. That's the frustration that comes being an artist. Mm. The bit I find the hardest is the drawing at the beginning. But once I've got over the perfectionist in me, perfectionist in me and got that, the painting is much. Yeah. And get into the painting then and forget about the drawing. It is yeah. what it is. Um, that, that's the bit that will take me time. I'll probably spend a day or two just trying to get the basic drawing that I want. I think I did it. I think I did it on here with this. I re we did yeah. this one last week, and I re mm -hmm. I didn't like it, so I re sketched it on an old bit. I washed off this mm -hmm. painting that was there before. Yeah. These were. Flowers. <laughs> yeah. That was Hardy's cottage is in there somewhere. Mm. Or was. Yeah, there's his chimney. Could you see it there? Yeah. yeah. Probably mm. rub that out. And then mm. I, yesterday I just I did what I practiced what I was preaching. 
Yeah. I've lost the portrait now. I don't know where it's gone. Of the, the woman. Which isn't so bad. Then I just did what I did. I, I drew mm. a line down here mm. and a line across there. Yeah. Here is, then I started. I know the eye. I, I think I did that eye first. And then I noticed that that eye. No, I didn't. I probably put a straight line down there and a straight line down there. Saying, well, that's the cheeks mm -hmm. coming out there and it's going yeah. in. And you just build it up. And one of the classic yeah. ones, I you can still see it there. It's to draw a circle on the end mm -hmm. of the nose. You draw yeah. a circle, then then the nostril bit comes there. You can yeah. do it there as well, and you'll get that curve. And then when you paint mm -hmm. it, don't paint. It reminds you, and there's another one there. Mm -hmm. It was a ball at the chin as well. And you mm -hmm. can sort of gradually build it up, and then sort of. Look at the well, the white of the eye. There's only that much there. There's only that much. Just do it like that. So yeah. you, pick, you pick bits of yeah part of the image that tells you what you need to do on the other bit, and then later mm. on you can look at it and think, well, where's the shady bits? Where well, there's a shady bit, obviously in the nose, mm. underneath the eye, and gradually build it up. Mm. Then when yeah. you come to paint it, but later on when you get really confident and skillful, you don't need a pencil. You can do yeah. that with a brush. Yeah. Before you even start. That's when the skill really comes. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you'll get there. So it's, it's sketching with a view to painting over the top is different to just sketching, isn't it? That's the thing. If you're going to do, um, if you're going to do it. You want to do as, you want to do faint lines and uh, not too much. This stuff is the um, stuff yeah. to get. You buy it yeah. in a three pads. Yeah. Um, brisk, it's called. It's Brisk Make It. It's the name of the mm. people. They make lots of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, they're famous for it. Yeah. Brisk, detailed, there's different types. And um, mm. use that alongside some um, yeah. tray stain paper. Which is yeah. that blue carbon stuff? Okay, yeah. And then you can put that underneath your watercolor, watercolor paper there, yeah. trace down. And then yeah. if you, if it, the beauty is, Claire, if you sketch on this and you're not happy, you just rub it off. You don't spoil yeah. it. Yeah. What I do when I trace it down, I use a biro. Yeah. So now I've, I've got that 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 image there yeah. forever. Yeah. On there. So if I want to do another quick one, yeah. I could do it quite easily. But as I say, what I tend to do, because we're using reference pictures a lot, yeah. it's not far off there. I think some that's bits, just like tracing paper, is it? It's, it's detail paper. Detail paper. Brisk typo, it's called. Is that brisk with a B or no, F. No, F. 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 F for Freddy, R yeah. I S K. Okay. And then the, the word is typo, T Y P O. Frisk typo, okay. Yeah, frisk typo. That's the um, stuff to use. Okay, yeah. And last, I put, I bought an A2, you can get it A2, so I bought one of those okay. and I just fold one half up to the top and use half at a time. But you, I think yeah. you A3. Even on Google. Yeah, on Amazon or something. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But Just as I say, say. And then you can trace from the reference image and then put yeah, it, on, very often put it I, onto your watercolour paper. Yeah, you can print yeah. it. Yeah. Everyone's got printers, haven't they? So you can sort of print it onto an A4 sheet and just use that. And once you build up confidence, you stop. You, you don't use it so often. Yeah, sure. After a while, I did sure. it yesterday with that lady. Might be worth it to start off with, then, mightn't it? Depends how much, and a lot depends how much time you could, you've got. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. What I find, what I tend to do is, I when I do the tracing or whatever, you know, just copying mm -hmm. it through, I'll only put the outlines on. Yeah, I won't 
won't put any flash detail. I might put yeah. a straight line where I think the yeah the nostrils are, or the eyes, the nose, yeah. lips. Get them roughly in the right place, and then trace it down. Then yeah. go to the computer and look at it, and with a pencil and and just yeah. And then that way you put a lot of um your mm. own you put your own stamp on it. And you, yeah, you know, how much you see and how much it changes. Yeah, sure. It's great fun. Yeah, it only takes um. Well, I've got some time this week, so I'll have a go at it. Half an tomorrow, hour. Probably. Yeah. Sunday morning, yeah. I'll, I'll do it on a Sunday morning yeah. for half an hour. Yeah. I like yeah. my draft. I Give it a I'm... go. Yeah, it looks good. I'm pleased with really. it. Well, there's not a lot you can do to it, really. It is what it is. I can smooth him down here and there, which I'll well, I'll probably wait until mm -hmm. tomorrow or Thursday, and then if I, if I feel the need, and I'll use the watercolor beige brushy tone just to tidy him up, Hello. just to add a little bit of. You can see it there now, but it will soften things down. You don't need a lot of any white bits that you're not happy with, but you can put it anywhere on a painting. Yeah, awesome. I can see some yellow in him as well, but mm. um, that'll go on for days. Mm. <laughs> you can look at him for, oh, that's golden yellow. Don't mess with that. The yellow I've got in my palette is sunlit gold. That is a serious bit of yellow. But there's some spots, you know, down here that mm -hmm. wouldn't hurt with a little bit of pushing there. Maybe over there. But you can brighten him up. Mm. And see what I mean? It's never a it's never ended. Mm. It's never they finished. No, but you can add a little bit of sparkle to him yeah. if you feel he needs it. Because the colours aren't that. The colours, obviously, they are important, but they're not set in stone. Mm -hmm. You can add, everyone sees it different. Mm. And this is high staining um, sunlit gold. Mm. In a, uh, that yellow's been in there for eight. Well, what I tend to do is I don't, on the paint side, things like that, I, it's yellow. So I'll just mm. whack it in the, the little well and use up. Mm. I've got tubes and tubes of paint that I've accrued that I've accrued people give you and one thing or another. Mm. Quite like this golden effect. Got a bit there, I think. Around his eye. It's just dry brush. I'm, the paint the brush hasn't got any paint on it. I was saving that bit for tomorrow. There's a bit there that wants to be um just a flesh colour, but it, it's his eyelid, but I just want it to be pure flesh, so it shows up a bit. But I won't get it today because it's too everything's too blue and wet. There you go. I've put a little bit of golden yellow on him, but you could use raw sienna. It's similar effect. Mm. It was just that it came on the brush, and I just noticed mm -hmm. it at the bottom. See what I mean? How much you can mm -hmm. yeah. you can change a picture in seconds. And if you're not happy about it, clean water, you can whoosh, melt some of it away. Mm. <laughs> Easy. Mm. I like that. I think he's could be my big, biggest seller for 2023. <laughs> no. I think his neck needs a little bit of TLC. Just down one side. Needs a bit more definition. 
I'll drop a little bit of shadow and a bit of gold on and see what happens. Hmm. More shadow? Yeah. That's it. You've had your that's your lot. Oh blind. That's your lot. <laughs> Look at the colour of that. Yeah. <laughs> no clean water in this place. But tomorrow when it's bone dry, I can use one of those stiffer brushes. That's why I bought them. Well, one of the reasons these uh, evergreen brushes from Rosemary is when it dries, you, they're quite, they're not, they're oil brushes effectively, but they're quite, they've got a nice stiffness to them. So you can just like, if you look at your, your image, you think, oh, I just wanted some highlights here. And there are, if there's a few places, then I can just, I won't put it soaking wet. I'll just dab it in the water, take off the excess with tissue so it's damp. And then I can just sort of go, oh, that needs lightening up up here. So if I just... But you can't do it when it's wet. When it's dry, you can lift it off. So tissue in one hand and just slowly lift some bits off. And like Claire said a minute ago, put some extra highlights on. Mm. But you need a, you need to wait a couple of days for it to damp or uh, dry off completely, and it'll work really well. Mm. Especially places where I put a little bit of um, white uh, gouache, white paint. Because that's mm. it. It's yeah. got a chalkiness to it, which helps that a lot. Mm. And especially there, I could lift off some bits there, bits, mm. bits off the ear. But if you try to do it now while it's soaking wet, mm. you got a a real stiff task. But it, when it dries, see so it won't. It'll budge, but it doesn't budge nice politely. Mm. But when it dries, you'll be surprised how well it lifts off. Mm. You can just rub it with a tissue at the same time. Pull off that yellow now. Mm. Got this jaundiced. <laughs> Luckily, it's not dry, dry, dry. But the tissue. Can leave a few little edges. See what I mean? Fickle. It's what you've got to be to be an artist. <laughs> yeah. Right, over to you, Lot. You have a go. Right. Okay. Well, what we can do. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Well, I like that. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got big character and he's at a funny angle. Mm. Zoom. I wonder if I zoom out. Too <laughs> <laughs> bad. No, it feels fine. No, it looks good. Mm. We'll liven him up with a little bit of lifting off mm. and stuff. Yeah, he's soaking wet. Mm. It's the only problem. Doing it in this way, but <laughs> it doesn't actually get much time to dry. And I don't like using a hair dryer. It's um, I always put it dry. I like to let let it dry natural. So it's um, I don't know. It seems to dry better that way. So more often than not, if I'm doing it, I'll. I'll do the sky, think, yeah, that's it, walk away, go and have a cup of tea, perhaps come go shopping or something, come back in the morning and, or in the afternoon, an hour later, and then do a bit more, you know what I mean? Gradually build it up in stages. Yeah. yeah. Whereas, obviously, the Tuesday mornings, you have to, you have to go for it straight away. Mm -hmm. But you'll be all right. Oh, look at the time. Oh, no, overrunning again. <laughs> yeah. It's early. I thought we were at... Oops. <laughs> yeah, well, you always say that. <laughs> oh, where have you... 
if you send me any picture that you do, Claire, you can. Um, yeah. I'll back it on the line or. Okay. Because okay, we've got a gallery, so we. we mm. might, I put them all on the gallery, so. Okay, oh, I shall have a go, and I shall send you something. Before yeah, next week. there's no, there's no pressure, there's no, yeah. there's no criticism. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't have done that. Shouldn't. Have. Mm. I just made all the mistakes, so yeah. that you don't have to make them. <laughs> yeah. okay. learn, learn from other people's <laughs> mistakes. Well, um, that's what I always joke, but I do, yeah. I do sometimes do things on purpose that mm -hmm. you, you wouldn't, you wouldn't normally do, just to say, look, that's what happen if you do it. <laughs> this you know yeah. not to do it. Yeah. Take some notes. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'll back you the video anyway. Oh, yeah, I'll thank you. Them. That'd be great. Um, then you can sort of stop, pause, and do all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Sure. Yeah, it'd be fine. It'll be. I will give it a go and see what happens. <laughs> but it's yeah. all about having fun. Just enjoy it. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I've had, I've had to stop working, so I'm trying to find things to occupy my time that don't use too much energy. Oh, so I decided that painting was something that would be a good idea. I've never been never really been very very creative, so I'm having to get over that perfectionist about me when I'm drawing and things. Mm -hmm. And like you say, no pressure. We'll just see see how it comes out. Yeah. Um, I'll give it fun. a go. Yeah, I'll send you something through. Thank you. Wonderful. It's good to join you today. Thank you very much. Amazing. Let's go and get lunch. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Indeed. Good luck, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye. I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah. yeah. That would be good. Yeah. yeah. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.